everyone. Today I'm going to make this video to discuss uh, a couple of uh, uh, OPD codes uh, that that are really uh, notorious in Ford Territory SC Diesel 2.7 liter TDCI. So this video is strictly about uh, this particular model with this engine 2.7 liter diesel uh, TD V6, but it also applies to uh, Jaguar and Rover Discovery three and four with these uh, AGD V6 engines. Uh, there are a couple of variations of this uh, engine. So it was originally developed by Ford, but there are a few variations uh, which I used in uh, Sithcon and uh, Tijo in DT17 and DT20, uh, V6, V8 engines, 2.7, 3.6. So since uh, the pedigree comes from the original 2.7 liter uh, GDV6 engine developed by Ford, so the concept actually applies to uh, the rest of this uh, lineup as well. So the two codes that I want to discuss today are uh, P023D-21 and dash 22. And uh, the second one is uh, P123A21 and uh, 22. So if we go to the factory manual to look up what these codes are generated uh, and when was the condition that when these two codes are generated, uh, actually for both uh, 23-21 and 22, it gives the same description, exactly the same one. Uh, you can pause the video here and have a look at uh, what this description says. Similarly, for 123-22 and 123-A-21, uh, the description is exactly the same. So let's just go back and uh, have a look at where these, what are the conditions that when these uh, errors are generated and to better, when we, we better understand what the conditions are, then obviously we are in a better position to sort out what the problem is. Before we do that, uh, I would like to go through the few sensors that this car has and this engine uses to determine what kind of uh, issues uh, this engine is facing. So the first sensor comes, uh, the first sensor that we will talk about is uh, housed inside uh, the turbo, uh, the variable geometry turbo uh, actuator housing. So it actually performs two functions. Uh, this is the motor for variable geometry turbo. It's a generic, uh, uh, generic uh, photo that I took off the internet, so it's not really specific to uh, the Ford Motor 2.7 liter, but it's just a gen generic uh, VGT turbo. So what happens is that uh, there is a motor that's connected right next to uh, a turbocharger, and uh, when the PCM asks uh, the turbocharger for more boost, this motor will actually uh, move. So for in case of Ford uh, uh, TDV6, uh, this motor moves about 60 degrees. So it had this arm uh, rotation, it's about 60 degrees. So when it moves from minimum to maximum, it actually moves this, uh, this lever in and out, which actually rotates uh, the geometry of uh, the wings. So the way it works is that uh, uh, any air exhaust air coming in uh, this shape of these wings, uh, or orientation of these wings will determine how much of pressure it's going to exert onto the on the turbine wheel. So if the computer want less pressure, uh, it will actually ask it for uh, command it to give it uh, a 5% opening or 0% opening. So you know, whatever the pressure is coming from the exhaust will be let outside of the uh, of the turbine without exerting any pressure on it. So this eliminates the use and requirement of wastegate uh, wastegate management. And uh, it is a pretty, pretty efficient way of doing that. So this is so the the motor itself it not only functions uh, as a motor but it also houses a sensor which actually looks at the physical rotation of the motor. Because once the PCM gives the um, motor in order to move out, let's say ten percent, then there is no way of telling the PCM that whether it moved whether the motor actually moved or not. If there is a physical linkage breakage, right? So yeah, it, the the motor may be healthy, but the linkage from the motor to this uh, lever may be broken, so it would not move out. So so the two sensors in there, so the two things in there, the active uh, components. The first is the motor itself, which actually uh, moves the arm in and out, and the second one is the turbocharger actuator position sensor, which is uh, housed inside here. So which monitors the length uh, of, of the movement of uh, the lever that uh, the motor actually actuated. So the second sensor 
that we are going to talk about is this manifold absolute pressure sensor. So this is uh, placed right on top of uh, the engine, right uh, above, uh, right above the uh, intake. Uh, I don't know what it's called. It's the butterfly valve. Uh, so it's on the top of the butterfly housing, and uh, this monitors the absolute pressure that it's getting. So if a computer uses, uh, if a computer commands a turbocharger to give a particular pressure and it sees a signal from this motor telling it that the arm actually moved then the next thing it would like to see is that it is it getting the same amount of pressure which it wants which is so the so the pcm already knows what kind of pressure it will get if the actuator armed a particular actuator arm moved a uh, uh, particular degrees or a particular percentage let's just say for 50 percent movement it should get i don't know probably 20 psi so maybe it's uh so this these curves have uh, been uh, implemented and they are stored in the pcm so pcm knows what it wants and how to get it so whether it's getting that particular pressure or not this manifold absolute pressure is going to tell it so the third one is the barometric pressure sensor. So there is no listed barometric sensor anywhere on the, the Ford manual. So the most common opinion is that it resides inside the PCM, which actually makes sense. And uh, the reason it is that uh, the barometric pressures are also integrated in the modern tablets and the phones and the PCs. So it's just there to monitor the ambient pressure. So it wouldn't surprise me that it resides in there. So uh, a very good guess is it's yes, it's uh, somewhere inside this PCM. Yeah. So we have talked about these three sensors. Let's go. Uh, we have talked about these three sensors: the actuator position sensor, the barrel sensor, and the manifold absolute pressure sensor. So now just let's go and have a look at the position of these sensors. So manifold absolute pressure, uh, the map sensor. I'll just call it the map sensor instead of stuck ring. So it resides somewhere over here, uh, just on top of this uh, body. So similarly, the PCM resides somewhere over here to the right of uh, engine, to the right here, somewhere here. If you look at this photo, and if you look at this photo, it resides somewhere here. So it's really in plain sight. Uh, nobody can miss it. And the third one is uh, this uh, turbocharger actuator position sensor. So that's inside, right next to uh, the turbocharger. So now let's go back and see the conditions when, or the conditions when these particular uh, cores are set. So what happens is, as we discussed earlier, when the PSCM wants to see a particular pressure, it commands the actuator to, to motor to move out that uh, move out the lever for a particular amount, and it complies that. But if it does not see that particular demanded pressure over here by this manifold absolute pressure, it will generate this particular code. And that is uh, 023-DH21. So what are the reasons of this 21 or 22 even? I mean, both the, it can be any of these codes. So there's no particular description between whether it will be a 21 or a 2. Both have the identical uh, conditions to be set, unless uh, some of you guys can actually ship in better. But the leading cause of this is the leaks on the charge air circuit. So let's go and see what the charge air circuit is. So, so the, it starts, the charge air circuit starts from the compressor wheel. So the actuator moves uh, the lever out and asks the turbine to give more output, more uh, pressure. So this pressure, this thing is connected over here to this pipe, the intake pipe, uh, charge air pipe. And the other end will be connected to this resonator. So this band over here that you see is the same band over here. So yeah, first comes the turbo, then this intake pipe, and then this uh, resonator. And there's another pipe which actually goes from the resonator uh, to this uh, uh, to this uh, intercooler. And from intercooler, the air cools and go back into the intake. And right here is the map sensor. So when we talk about the leakages, we are talking about leakages that may be coming from every, anywhere. So you can start just from here, have a look at this body, whether it's great, a lot of time it is great, a lot of time this pipe is great. 
go back and have a look at uh, the intercooler. It maybe have some cracking. Sometimes the stone come from the front and hit it and chip it. Similarly, this thing can be quick. So all these pipes, because the, the pipe, this particular pipe on my car, it was really solid, right? You, I mean, it, it it lost its properties of uh, plastic or rubber or whatever it was. Probably it was rubber to begin with, it ended up like a plastic, it was so hard. So it really needs to make sense to have a better understanding of, um, uh, uh, or a better view of whether there is a leak somewhere in this circuit or not so all these things need to be checked you can start from here and go down to the bottom uh, to begin with and once you determine that there is no leak over there and your whole uh, system is totally sealed then the next thing can be whether your actuator arm has disengaged so i've actually uh, put this photo of an actual uh, actuator arm this is a valid arm for uh, 2.7 liter or the same uh, degree of the engines that we have discussed earlier. So what you can see here that it has this uh, a ball joint on one end. On one end, uh, it is this is a nut. Uh, so also when you look at the motor here, so this end is here over here, but the ball joint end is on the other end. So if you are not getting any boost at all, then one of uh, the most probable reasons can be that uh, this ball joint has disengaged. So you can just uh, slide under your car and see if uh, the motor is moving. If the motor is uh, moving, because you can you put the key in the ignition and without starting the car, just turn it on. The motor will initially move the lever in and out. So you will be able to see the lever moving in and out. But the other end, <laughs> since it will be disengaged, uh, you will not see any kind of, uh, uh, I don't know, probably if you've connected a computer, you will not see any kind of, uh, Mm, any kind of uh, pressure coming from the car if it started but yeah you will not be able to tell it from under the car that whether it's disengaged or not unless you can put a hand on it and physically uh, are able to move it on uh, the other end you're physically able to move it so it's a uh, it's a tough cookie you have to go and uh, remove the or at least get in a better position to see whether it's disengaged or not so but uh, in that condition i think that uh, the most obvious you will not lose a uh, boost at a particular rpm you will just all lose all the boost because uh, the vgt is not being controlled by pcm anymore because the arm is disengaged so there are symptoms to different problems and if you know what you are if you really understand what your problem or what exactly the problem is that you are facing you can quickly go on to find the reason of that the third may be the turbo fault and uh, this may come from some something that may have happened over here it may be an internal damage it may be the wings are disconnected from this section which is controlled by the lever it can be anything so turbo has to be disassembled in that case and the last case can be map sensor is so faulty that uh, probably each and everything is in there but this map sensor is not telling it correctly so to find out whether the map sensor is right uh, is doing it or not so the problem can manifest itself in different forms it can be a different rpm it can be idling it can be when the car is hot so you have to consider create the same condition and use an external boost known pressure and check your system uh, the index circuit and see whether you are getting the same reading from this manifold absolute pressure sensor if you're getting the same reading your pressure sensor is fine it's just that uh, yeah you have to look at somewhere else so these are the reasons uh, which can cause this particular code to set. Uh, these last two uh, reasons, I don't think that they will be really common. I've had a look at uh, one of the turbos, uh, VGT turbos from uh, a territory that were 240,000 kilometers on it, and it was just as good as new. So I don't think that the turbos go faulty anytime uh, sooner. So they're really sturdy ones. So most probably it is this thing that you're looking at or probably the actuate arm disengagement in worst case you're not getting any boost the second uh code that i have like back about is p1 2 and 2 2 and this code is a funny one it says that the barometric uh, the barrel turbocharger supercharger boost sensor a correlation so when the car is not even started, 
the PCM will have a look at the values coming from the manifold absolute pressure sensor and compare it to the ambient pressure. Those two pressures cause the conditions are uh, same. The car is not even started. There is no vacuum. There is no boost. So it means that uh, the both pressure should be the same. There is a pressure sensor. There is a pressure sensor. Both measuring the same thing. The values should be the same. So if uh, the PCM does not get the same value, it will uh, issue this uh, this code that there is some problem with the absolute pressure sensor. So whenever there is a code, you get this code, there is a 90% chance that your absolute pressure sensor has gone bad. And uh, there's a very less chance that the barometric pressure itself has gone bad. So to check the to check the barometric pressure, uh, really just uh, uh, switch the ignition on and have a look at what kind of pressure the barometric pressure is showing. If it is showing what uh, actually meets uh, for a particular elevation, for example, if you're living next to a seaside area and it shows 100 kilopascals, uh, that's that's pretty much uh, yeah, that's uh, your your barometric sensor is okay. But if uh, you are uh, you're living somewhere on a hillside and it's uh, I don't know a thousand meter above sea level and it's showing 100 kilopascals, it's probably gone bad. Or on a sea level, it's showing 70 kilopascals, it's probably gone bad. So if you know for sure that your ambient pressure is shown by PCM, which is incorrect, then probably you have to change the PCM instead of the map pressure sensor. Well, the last thing that I want to discuss is that um, the price of uh, this manifold absolute pressure sensor and why it goes bad. So it is made of that uh, diaphragm, uh, it is made on the diaphragm principle where there's a diaphragm in here and uh, with the boost, it actually goes in and out and changes the um, the resistance or whatever it does and the computer knows that uh, what the pressure is but since with the repeated exposure to high level of pressures uh, this thing can go bad and usually this thing goes bad when the car touches uh, 200,000 kilometers so anything above 200,000 kilometers is just uh, uh, I don't know it's just the verge of failure and uh, probably the reason these are expensive, and they are really expensive. If you go to a Ford dealer, they'll probably charge you for $600 for it. And the reason that they are expensive are they, because they are made sturdier as compared to the rest of uh, the boost sensors, where pressure sensors, as compared to the petrol cars where there's a vacuum when the car is running. So it does not have to see excessive or high amount of uh, boost. But uh, I think that the reason it's uh, expensive is because it's made for uh, boost applications. Now, where to get them cheap? Uh, I looked up in multiple, uh, I, I just checked multiple um, stores and uh, online, did my online research, and uh, I came to the conclusion that the, the price is high for the sensor. But the best price that I was able to get was ordering it from uh, UK for the Land Rovers. Because this sensor, when it is the exact same sensor which is used by Ford Territory and Land Rovers and uh, Peugeot's and uh, I don't know Jaguar with the same engine, because the engine is the same, so the measuring and sensor principle is the same. So it just you have to just look for a particular car which actually uses the same sensor and you can order it. So the one I ended up ordering was uh, uh, this one. Which actually says 64.95 pounds, so it equates to around 120 dollars. So yeah, I'm pretty much happy with it. So yeah, but this is all that I wanted to share with you guys today on uh, how to diagnose your system if you are facing any of these troubles, any of these two trouble posts. Thanks a lot for listening, and thank you very much.